is 28-year-old Daniel Davis Aston, and this is 38-year-old Derek Rump. Both were bartenders at Club Q, the LGBTQ nightclub where on Saturday night, a gunman clad in body armor opened fire with an AR-15 style rifle. Daniel and Derek were among the five killed and at least 25 wounded before someone in the club grabbed a gun from the shooter, hit him in the head with it, and pinned him to the ground. 22-year-old alleged shooter was taken alive by the cops, but so far, police say that he hasn't told them anything. Media report the gunman was arrested in 2021 after allegedly threatening his mom with a homemade bomb, but police didn't use the incident to trigger red flag laws, which would have allowed the cops to seize guns his mom claims he had. The city's mayor has said the attack on a place that locals call a refuge for LGBTQ residents in a highly conservative town has all the trappings of a hate crime. The suspected shooter has been charged with five counts of first degree murder. Um, it's real sad that uh, shit like this is still going on where you can't be yourself because other motherfuckers think they have the entitlement to tell you who you can love, who you can be, and what you can accept in life. We're all created different. We all not the same. All, all of our mind thinking and all this other shit is not the same. And just because you might have think of something that somebody else might have thought at the time, that's just because the hypothesis or the motherfucking details made y'all think like that. But all of us is different. All of us deserve love. And, you know, if this is how some people deserve and find they love, then let them be happy as long as they're not, you know what I'm saying, mold or mucus or some fucking negative ass shit to the earth that we hear and see about all the time. Also in New York, uh, I'm gonna show the, the article is a very disturbing thing that happened in New York. So, as we transition into some crazy shit, um, we about to talk about this crazy ass motherfucker who kidnapped a little girl. Um, we just gonna go into the footage of it, but um, you just gotta be aware, alert. You know what I'm saying? Of what's going on out there because motherfuckers is sick, crazy. Mental health is motherfucking real, and it's just something that a lot. A lot of people isn't talking about this shit. Like, I feel like if we were so aware of things, maybe a lot can be done. Like, a lot of bullshit can be stopped. Um, I don't know. It's just a hypothesis of what I'm thinking. But anyway, subscribe to the channel. You'll be helping me out. And it's free. Like and comment down below. I use the feedback to bring you guys content in different ways. And it's just a review, informational channel, as well as a reaction channel. Hope you're having a blessed day. Watch as an innocent little girl gets taken from her mother's grasp. Hands! Let me see your hands! Step out here! Step out! Fort Worth resident and ex-convict Michael Webb kidnaps eight-year-old Salem Sabathka, leading police on an eight-hour-long manhunt. It is an early evening in Fort Worth County, Texas. Mrs. Sabathka is taking a walk with her daughter, eight-year-old Salem Sabathka, when all of a sudden, the neighbors are alerted to her screaming. Her daughter had just been kidnapped. On this neighbor's security camera, it can be seen that Mrs. Sabathka is aggressively thrown to the ground. The driver of the fleeing vehicle has just kidnapped Salem Sabathka and driven off into the sunset, believing that no one had gotten a good enough description of his vehicle. They fought with the male that abducted her child, so, so much so that she was able to grab a piece of jewelry off of that male. The Fort Worth Police Department immediately put out an Amber Alert and released the description of Michael Webb and his car. Uh, that suspect is a black male, like we put out earlier. The age is going to be 51 years of age. It's going to be a gray Ford 500. It's the vehicle that we released in the picture. Enter Jeff King, the local pastor at the church in Fort Worth, who later said, I feel like God allowed uh, me to be a tool. It was his search and rescue efforts that would eventually lead to the arrest of the kidnapper. So a friend of ours texted me and 
And I said, well, what are we doing about it? By 2 a.m., Jeff spotted the car in a parking lot of a hotel not... miles from where the kidnapping had taken place and alerted the police. Do you have the room information for room 333? I need like that person's name when they checked in all that stuff. Description of the mill that's staying in this room. It is still unclear what motivates a man to commit such heinous crimes. The Fort Worth Police Department would claim that the victim was selected at random. It looks like he was just driving down the street, saw a child and decided to take that child at that minute. At this point in time, uh, it may have seemed like it's just a random deal that he just decided to take this child. So do you mean to tell me Brody was out there on some fucking just driving, riding along type shit and he seen a little kid and was like, damn, I should kidnap her. And then he decides to, to do the shit. And what part of that don't raise awareness of this motherfucker is sick, mental health is real, and he's very demonic as fuck like who who just be like oh i'm about to kidnap this person and then he fought with the mom she they got to such a big scuffle that she was able to snatch some jewelry off of him and shit you know what i'm saying so it's like what the fuck like man thank god he wasn't that smart i, I can't say that at this given moment but in his interrogation michael tearfully confesses to his crime and, and I know I missed somebody because when I pushed the woman and grabbed her, I heard somebody screaming. I told her that if she said anything, that I would do something to her parents. And if I was in jail, I would have my friends to do. Michael had assaulted the child and threatened her before the Fort Worth police came barging into the hotel room where he was hiding her and arrested him. Hands! Let me see your hands! Step out of here! Step out! After a brief search, Salem Sabathka was found hidden inside a basket beneath a pile of clothes and scared to make any sound. Hey, here she is. Got her. We got her. We got her. We have her. We need an EMT. Come on, sweetheart. You safe? You're going to be okay. During the trial, Michael's past offenses and his confession during his interrogation were crucial evidence used against him. He was charged with kidnapping and sexual assault of a minor. He is sentenced to prison for life without parole. He's not appear to be upset, angry, or otherwise um, emotional. What I tell y'all, mental health. This motherfucker got one pants leg ripped off. I think that's the other motherfucker right there because it's leaning and shit. It looked like he got like paper bags around his ankles. And just to hear what he said is really fucked up. Like, you really is fucked up, my boy. On um, so many levels and Thank God I got a scum like this off the earth because you can't just be out here driving, like he said, at random and just decide, I'm about to kill somebody. I'm about to kidnap somebody. I'm going to run these people over. You know what I'm saying? Like people like that who think like that do not need to be out here in this world because you never know what negativity and goddamn infection they might put out here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, shit spread like COVID and shit so damn contagious. This story out of Texas is tragic. This is Gabriel Zamora, a 14-year-old high school freshman out of Dallas. He was heading home from a night of bowling with his family when they honked their car at an erratic driver. That's when that driver pulled up his truck next to the family's car, pulled out a gun, and fired five times. Gabriel was struck by multiple bullets in his head, arm, and torso. He was rushed to the hospital, but after being in a coma since September, Gabriel died on Saturday. His family is heartbroken, including his sister, who let Gabriel sit in the front so she could be with her kids in the back. I blame myself just because he was always with me and I always took care of him. Road rage shootings are on the rise in the US, with an average of 44 people killed or wounded every month by road rage induced gunfire, according to Every Town for Gun Safety. Police still haven't identified Gabriel's shooter or arrested anyone involved in the incident, but his family continues to demand justice.